Thai. She's bringing up this trip to Vietnam. I, I think she thinks that there's something else going on. So maybe she's trying to catch me in a lie. I don't know. There's no lie, though. I'm going to eat upon me. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. I love him, too. He's okay. so nerdy. Goofy. He's such a... He's such a... Like, door. <laughs> No, he's, not a, he's, 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 he's a nerd. He's, a dork. he's, he's a just like he, – but I mean that so in like lovable. the way I think my husband is a dork and I love my husband yeah. so much, but he is a dork. Mine too. Mine is exactly yeah. the same way. <laughs> like, okay, wait, Arthi, before we get into New York, I do have to tell you that you are lucky again, mm-hmm. once again, to join me on the journey of does Noor have COVID? Oh, no. <laughs> Seriously, you, you backed away Did from Tom your Hamlet camera as you if COVID? you're gonna. Huh? Tom Hamlet give you COVID? Was it no, Donnie? Ta- it no, was Donnie wasn't it? It was Donnie. <laughs> Taria. Well, first of all, no. <laughs> Let me just say, first of all, I did um, I did not take a COVID test yet because I've been trapped in my office actually working all day, so I do mm-hmm. have to take one. But um, I woke up with a cold, so it's officially that time of the year where I'm like. Is it COVID? So I do need to get tested. Otherwise, oh I did see all of all of our podcasters this weekend. And yeah. by the way, can I just say, happy podiversary. Yeah. Podiversary, where you went and celebrated with the others <laughs> and did not invite me. I'm just saying. I could have made it. Auntie. At least two of them came from here. I could have tagged along. I don't even take up that much space. I'm a, <laughs> I packed light. I could have come. I'm just saying. All right. Well, no one bothered. Not okay. two, three. Three people <laughs> came from here. My you're goodness. being such an you're being such an auntie right now. I kept notes. Peak I auntie. took notes. I took notes and I was like, first of all, fuck y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Number one is fuck you. Number one. How dare you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So Oh, wait, Harold is having a conniption back there. Yeah, hold on. Well, I'm sorry, but I didn't organize that trip. But did you see our costumes? Yes. Well, mm-hmm. Kix got, um, won the costume thing because she, I just love that she was in a potato sack. <laughs> Arthi, she made it herself. She made oh my the God. potato sack it, it dress looked, herself. It looked like she made it herself, but it <laughs> fit her so well. It looked so cute on her. But uh-huh. can I guess who the... um? Who the murderer was? You can guess it, but I'm not allowed to tell you on camera or on pod. Okay, I can... just blink. Was okay. you? <laughs> what happened? It was you, wasn't it? I mean, I don't know. Maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. <laughs> I am pretty sure it was you. <laughs> I can't confirm the nor innocent, deny. The innocent one that you know nobody thought would be killing was the killer. Went on a killing you know, spree. us nerds, we get away with a lot. Yep. Um, people underestimate us. Yes. And they don't know that we're keeping lists and taking we down keep names. Lists. We do we do they see lists and they see math. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so this episode of Real Houses of New York, it opened up with Sai and Aaron talking shit about Jessel and Jessel uh, visiting Jenna. And I thought the difference between like the two women is so stark. Like the two groups was so stark. Like Sai and Aaron are, they don't even really like each other. Can we just remind everybody that? Like the first half of the season was those two fighting yeah. with each other. Yeah. Th- th- even, th- even in this episode, like when Sai says she ate already, Aaron is yeah. already pissed off about it. They are yeah. only banding together because they are want they want to bully Jessel. That's all, and that's like and the they worst. keep saying, "Oh, your favorite person, your favorite person," and they're rolling their eyes. It's just pure bullying. There's nothing else. There's no other uh, no, no other explanation to that. They're yeah, just miserable, humorless, miserable fucks. Yeah, and I feel like people who are friends based on only the hatred of another person, like if your mm-hmm. friendship is just that you're going to sit around and talk shit about other people, mm-hmm. that's not an actual friendship. Like even no. when they're going to be together with their like spouses, they're going to talk shit. So Sai tells Aaron about this lunch with Jessel. And of course, immediately Sai is like, 
oh yeah, she had sex with Puppet and she took said she took 25 minutes to warm up. I mean, what is that? I'm like, no, she said warm up down there. That's not what Jessel said. That's not what Jessel said. She said it took 20 minutes for her to relax and get it, you know, get into it. Get out of her, out of the funk that was bothering her. Yeah. And that's not the same as what she what Sai is conveying. No, not at all. And then Sai tells a story. And I'm about, like, wait, you don't your husband doesn't have any, you know, he doesn't do a little warm up for you. You are <laughs> supposed to perform right away. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, I mean, listen. Mm-hmm. I've got a lot of thoughts about Abe and David. <sighs> we'll get into it later. But yeah. um they also talk about the alcoholism story and how mm-hmm. Jessel was trying to talk about her uncle. And the mm-hmm. reason why Jessel, by the way, was talking about her uncle, again, if you go back and watch the lunch, Jessel says, I have a hard time talking about my time in New York when I first moved here because my uncle was an alcoholic and he passed away and I was really close to him and I have a lot of trauma associated with that. And I thought you would understand because mm-hmm. your mom has also gone through it and it's difficult for you to talk about it. Like that is mm-hmm. literally what Jessel was trying to say is it's difficult for me to talk about my uncles and how and what life mm-hmm. was like for me at that time because my uncle died of alcoholism, right? Mm-hmm. And of course, Sai is like, she brought up my mother. How dare she bring up my mother? And then Aaron reads, like Sai is saying one thing, Aaron's reading a whole other thing into it. Like right. none of them are listening to each other. Sai is not listening to Jessel and Aaron is not listening to Sai. And they're yeah. all just coming up with their own little conclusions about like – Right. What it is that they think that the other person is saying. And it's so stupid. Right. It is so stupid. And the way Sai and Aaron go about just, they just hold on to that thread and they keep pulling and pulling and pulling and just making shit up throughout this episode. It just tells me that they have nothing else going on in their own lives. Their personal lives must be so boring if they cannot talk about anything but Jessel's personal life. Exactly. Then Sai explains about the mileage run and Abe mm-hmm. shows up. And this I thought was really interesting because Abe actually says to Aaron that he'd love to actually get 24 hours of peace and quiet and the miles. He was like, oh, that's a great deal. And yeah. Aaron and Sai both are like, well, David and Abe know that like we just would never allow that. Like, right. okay, so you recognize that this is something your husbands would do, but mm-hmm. you guys would not allow it. So you recognize so, this is a thing. Like, right. I don't understand in, in why – <laughs> Yeah. And in the previous conversation where they were talking about uh, sex and, um, you know, marriage, the husbands were saying that they cannot, they wouldn't allow, they wouldn't be in the marriage if they didn't get regular sex. Yeah. So the husbands have put a condition on your marriage and you're putting a condition on your, you know, on the husbands. So this is the arrangement that you guys know. This is the arrangement that you are, you are, you understand And Mm -hmm. it's not the healthy arrangement. It's actually Mm -hmm. a very toxic arrangement. But this is what you think is a normal marriage because this is what you have seen around you. That's where, you know, you mentioned, I think you tweeted something out about how it's a a South Asian marriage is very different from what the Western concept of marriage is. And there's like, there are subtleties in how we approach marriage. And I think it's not just South Asian. I think it's a lot of other successful marriages also do the same. But it's a little bit more pronounced in South Asian marriages. But that's yeah. something that I don't think these two understand what a healthy marriage is about. Absolutely. And when we talk about that scene when they all go on the triple date and Jessel and Bavit like talk about what makes their marriage and then later on when Jessel – like I really I, – I actually had a very emotional reaction to watching it and I wrote a whole bunch mm-hmm. of notes so I really want to get into that later. But I wanted to talk about Jessel's meeting with Jenna and the way mm-hmm. Jenna is so mature about what she says. Like, you know, it's a really big deal that you're talking about like not being able to mm-hmm. like have sex with your husband like that. She's so mature. Right. She's like, it's so good. Women never talk about it. Like that's so good. And then even what Jenna says to Jessel, right? She says, Jessel, I can tell that you want to feel understood. You don't like feeling misunderstood, right? Yeah. And I thought that was so important because when you are a South Asian person, when you come, and this isn't just South Asian, it was just people with who come from, you know, the third culture kids. 
That's what Mm -hmm. we call ourselves, right? Like Mm -hmm. we're the people that live in two worlds and have sort of our own understanding of what Mm -hmm. our culture is. And it's so hard because a lot of that work of discovering yourself includes within it like unpacking your own internal biases about yourself, about your own culture, about other cultures. Like it's very hard. And I think that when you – also when you grow up in a multilingual home, Right. When you grow up in a multicultural situation, like she's Indian. She grew up in London. But she also her, has like these other n- nuances. She grew up in different places. So, so she's she, Gujarati. Well, yeah. Well, she's Gujarati. Yeah. Her mom, her parents are Gujarati. They grew up in Kenya. Then they moved to London. She grows up in London. Then she moves to New York. She's married to an American, American Indian guy who is Sikh. And yeah. Punjabi and Sikh, Punjabi. and she is Gujarati yeah. and Hindu. Like, there's yeah. a lot of different nuances here. And if you don't know the difference between which, I don't reckon, I don't think, I don't owe it to people to, I don't think anybody is responsible right. to know those things, right? But that's why I'm right. talking about it. It is very hard to figure out the how to balance all of these things. And you often feel misunderstood or that you don't understand what's going on, or you don't understand how to read a situation because you are filled with these cultures. I mean, you know this because you are South Indian, but you grew up in North, like you lived in North India, you lived all over India, and you often say when you're thinking, sometimes words don't come to you because you're thinking about them in like five or six different languages. Right. And I mix them up all the time, and I sometimes mix up languages and it just comes out. And then I understand people in multiple languages talking and my brain does some gymnastics and I understand them, <laughs> but then I speak in a whole other language back to them, right? So that happens. But also when you have all these different cultural nuances that you have to navigate through, one of the things that you learn is not to jump to conclusions and take a pause and listen. So yeah. when somebody says something to you, and they are saying that you are doing something wrong, oftentimes we take a beat and we listen in. It's not that we don't we don't want to um, you know confront them and we don't feel hurt and we don't get mad, but we take a pause to analyze to see if it's something that we we are doing and is something that we have to correct, or is it something truly offensive? before you take offense, especially if you are the one moving in all of these circles and it's not your, your primary circle. So it's where you are the foreign person in all of these cultures, you are the outsider. So you take a beat. If you were not the outsider, if you were the host and somebody from the outside was coming in, you would not feel the same pressure because you are in your environment. The pressure is on the outsider. Yeah. And when we are, as immigrants, have to go through so many different cultures, we are an outsider in so many different situations that we always take a beat and we take a pause. Oftentimes that's taken as a weakness and people just pile on. on that. Yeah. And I think like, you know, for Jessel, she... I think that's why she feels so connected to like Jenna or Uba because Jenna is familiar with like navigating through different situations, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, she's a white woman, yeah. a successful white woman in New York, but she has this like sexuality that she discovered later on in her life and she that recognizes she had to it, navigate where she, that she was had the to outsider navigate. and she, yeah. Exactly. That she had to navigate. Uba is an immigrant and she's lived in a couple of different places. Right. So she understands. Even Bryn I think is starting to become more understanding of Jessel because Bryn is biracial. So I yeah. think that there is a more people are like these people, these women are giving more grace to Jessel because they're because they're recognizing where her struggle is. Jessel doesn't mm-hmm. mean harm in anything yeah. she's doing. She's never been disrespectful. She's never been. She was rude about her lingerie. And then after that, right. she course corrected. And she's like been totally different with them because you could tell right. that when she was miserable in the in Hamptons, it was because she did not feel good about herself. Right. Right. And she now she feels good about herself. And I think it's so hard to watch her 
like feel good about herself and present herself in the best way that she can and still right. feel misunderstood. That is so right. difficult and as like an adult, like as a 40-year-old woman, right. that is so fucking annoying. It's something like, we go through as immigrants in school and college, but if you have to go through it every, as a 40-year-old woman where she's in a workplace environment that she thought she had already navigated in this country, and now she's in a new workplace environment and she has to deal with this bullying, that's a very hard thing to do. Jessa did one thing wrong. That's just one thing wrong. She misunderstood the nature of her workplace. She misunderstood yeah. that these were work work colleagues and not friends. And she yeah. has been honest and real about everything. And she has essentially overshared with people that haven't been kind with that information. That's yes. all. And she's everything that Sai and Erin have done has been curated information. I don't think um, Bryn does that. I don't think Jenna does that. I don't think Jessel does that. I don't think Uba does that. Everybody is presenting, being as authentic as possible, except for Sai and Aaron. They are trying to show that they are super successful. Their marriage is without any issues ever. Mm. And... That they are, um, they are the true, you know, New Yorkers, and they are direct, and they are this and that. It's all curated. They are presenting parts of themselves that they want to. Asai has gone through her trauma Olympics and presented the package that she wanted to present. She's not presenting anything more. We don't know what Sai's husband does. We don't. She only presents about her mother in the forum that she wants to, when she mm -hmm. wants to, but doesn't want anybody else to talk about it when they want to relate to her because then it takes away from her control, okay? Yes. So these two have curated everything that they have presented to the world. Jessel, on the other hand, has been the exact opposite and she has basically laid bare everything. She's She is having a conversation about Pavit going to... Um, Vietnam, like you and I would over chai, right? We are saying, oh yeah, Pavit is planning to go to Vietnam. He's gonna. I'm glad he did the staycation before because he's gonna be gone in a, a couple of weeks, and I'm glad he got this done now. That's all. She didn't say the date. She didn't say when he's flying out. She didn't have to say anything more than that. She didn't have to say why um, Pavit is going to Vietnam. She didn't. And she said it. When they asked, why is he going? She's like, oh, mileage run. She didn't have to say that. She could have said for work and gotten away with it. She's having these conversations thinking that she has to be real. And they are taking those conversations and running with it. Remember, when she brought up the no sex thing, she was bringing it up because she was talking about postpartum and the difficult time she had with uh, in vitro. And then somebody asked her uh, point blank, when was the last time you had sex? And she answered yes. it honestly. And since then, it's been about sex and not about what she went through. This is yes. like, and she's just been honest throughout. It they are. She's not curating. She's not hiding anything. She's just presenting herself as is. And these women are taking it and twisting it and presenting it as something else. So I don't. Th I think the one mistake that Jessel did was to be honest and real about everything. And they keep saying, "Be honest, be real." Well, that's exactly what she did, and she paid for it. She paid for it because you bitches are so horrid, so nasty that you go after her for something that she presented to you presented to you as an issue that she thought you would help her overcome she was trying to be open about what she went through and instead of empowering her you took her down exactly and you know i think you brought up such a good point about like sai and aaron's lives being so curated because aaron, sai is an influencer like that is a big part of what they do they curate a particular image about themselves and they continue mm -hmm. to put that you know all of their platforms so sai i mean let's just talk about it so there's a scene with sai and her aunt sufia and she comes mm -hmm. and 
they're talking in Spanish and they're making rice and beans and they're talking about her mom and how she was an artist and all this stuff, right? It's lovely. It's beautiful. It's really great. And I wish that we could see more of that maybe with Sai, but the reality is that she is very particular, like you said, about the shit that she shares about her family, right? And there has been a lot of stuff. Again, we mentioned it last week, but there was like this rumor about Sai and how she ended up with David and David used to be married to somebody else, allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. There, you know, Sai has been talking about like, Jessel, be honest. None of your stories make sense, whatever. Well, funny because Sai said that she and David have been married for like 13 or 14 years. Mm -hmm. The internet found their marriage license and found out that no, they've actually been married more like seven years. Sai also has men- mentioned that she she said that something about like how she met her husband or she's been with her husband for 14 years, but then she's done interviews where she where the timeline looks like it's more like 10 years. It's just mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff about Sai that is not adding up. And I think a lot mm-hmm. of what we're seeing with Sai and Aaron is a lot of projection. It's a lot right. of projection of what they're actually afraid of themselves. Like Aaron and um, Sai have that conversation with their husbands later, and they have this swingers triple date mm-hmm. at swingers. And Sai and Aaron and their husbands get there first. And again, they start talking about Jessel's sex life, which is so strange. Why are you talking? Oh, okay, <laughs> I have <sighs> okay. I have best best friends from high school, right? Like mm-hmm. my best best friends. I've known them since I was fourteen or fifteen. Mm-hmm. Those are the girls that I will talk to about my sex life. And I'll tell you mm-hmm. why. Because they literally came up with me, right? Like those are girls, like mm-hmm. we all were like, what? Our body does this? What's going – like it's a different kind yeah. of relationship right, where right, right. I can talk to certain people about sex. What I'm not going to do is talk to, to – Wait for 10 more years and then we'll start <laughs> talking about menopause. It's so much fun. <laughs> That's what I do with my Oh, friends. I mean I, I – <laughs> Yeah. I mean, we're already starting to talk about it because one of my friends <laughs> it went into early menopause because she just finished breast cancer treatment. <laughs> so we're already there. She's yeah. already telling me all the things. But anyway, like I have those friends. But what I will not mm-hmm. do is talk to a p- bunch of people that I just met at my job a year ago right. about about my sex life and then give you details about it and then – you take that information and you take it to your husbands to talk about yeah. with – like if I Ooh, wanted to – I have a lot of friends that I've made in like the last like five years yeah. or six years since my yeah. kids have been in school. Right. I love those moms. I love it. But one of the things that we've always said is I don't want to imagine you and your husband having sex because I know your husband and it's weird yeah. for me. Like I just yeah. – I don't want to imagine it, right? Mm-hmm. And my husband doesn't want to imagine it. So why would I then take that information right. to my husband? My husband would be talk- so disinterested. He would be it's like, huh, really- what? Why? Why are we talking about other men? And not yeah, and it's not even a matter of like being a prude or anything. I think my husband would find it really disrespectful. Like, why are you talking about that? But for these guys to sit around and then be like Aaron being like, yeah, I got to give blowjobs to Abe to like keep mm-hmm. – these women are one blowjob away from losing their husbands. Like this is how Correct. bad it is for them. That's how bad it is. Like she tells she tells her that she just gave him a blowjob and so she, she's good for a couple of days. And I'm like, why? Why are we talking about this? I don't want to imagine you giving Abe a blowjob. And Abe is like, I need it yeah. every day. I need it a lot. I'm like, okay, this is like Joe Gorga. And, you know, it's a like Joe Gorga level of cringe, right? Even when Joe Gorga was doing it, I didn't like it. In this case, I don't like it because Joe Gorga did not shame anybody else and did not question other men. <laughs> and he just talked about his Shockingly. own penis. Yeah. It's this is like Mike from Shaw's talking about his duel. This is I don't need to know any of that. <laughs> you know, just leave it alone. But also how how so here's the thing that in that scene, I think the remember the very first episode or something where Sai's husband was saying, Well, she just had twins, so maybe that's why. And yeah, we thought, oh, was so he's so nice. He was so reasonable. And here he is gossiping. And when Pavit shows up, he's the one taunting. And then he's the one going after Uba and pressuring her to the point where Uba makes it a point to share some information with Sai, which was 
only because Sai's husband was pressuring Uba. I think that's why she did it. But I'm now disgusted yeah, yeah, yeah. by both David and Abe. They're like, oh my God, you guys are disgusting lums that put way too much emphasis on sex. Your wives are scared to lose you guys. And your your marriages must really suck because it's hanging by a thread if you all you can talk about is another couple's sex life. It's really disgusting. And like um Sai keeps saying that like when um when Aaron's like, Oh yeah, um Jessalyn and Bobbitt are gonna come, Sai's like, I genuinely don't care if 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 Jessel comes, like I'm not mad at her. I just want her to be authentic, more authentic. And it's like, do you care about her then or not? Like you're saying, you yeah. genuinely don't care, but you also want her to be authentic. If you genuinely yeah. don't care about someone, you genuinely don't care. You're like, yeah, I'm fine with them. I don't care. I don't think about them, yeah. right? But Bef- all yeah. Sai does is think about Jessel. <laughs> That's right. all she does. Before we go into before before the arrival of Jessel and Pavit into this dinner, can we? Can I just do a detour to Sai's aunt, right? And that scene, that's sort of one of the things that has bothered me a lot is, you know, you and I overanalyze everybody. We psychoanalyze all of these characters, right? But one of the things I never. That's our business model here. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) If we could get miles for it, we would be, we would have so many miles. (laughs) We would be traveling first class. We would be going to Vietnam. We would be taking showers with Penelope screws, okay? But um, in any case, the one thing that always bothered me was why I couldn't figure out what made Sai so miserable. I could not figure it out. And I think in that scene, I got a little glimpse of it. She talks about her aunt and talks about how her aunt is so emotional, and mm. that she cried. And when her mother died, she was devastated. And she's the way she sees it, there seems to be some sympathy and empathy for her aunt to be mm, emotional. The way she says mm-hmm. it, she's not disgusted that her aunt is emotional. I think what it leads to is that she grew up in a situation where her mother was an alcoholic and unavailable emotionally. And her mm-hmm. aunt was way too emotional and was had to be consoled at all times and was mm-hmm. too much of an emotional drain on her. And the only way Sai could live through all of that was to completely be unemotional and just be practical in her way, which is pretty mm-hmm. much being mean, and just, yeah. just put that emotion deep down and not react to either extremes, right? And so yeah. that's where I think Sai is psyche is, and she needs to really not take my word for it, but this is the starting point, Sai. Take this information and go to a real therapist and work through that shit because you have a lot of anger. You have a lot of anger and you are upset with Jessel because Jessel has tinges of the same kind of story, but you do not want to... You are looking at Jessel and you're getting... illogically mad at her for things that happened to you. Yes. And it's agreed. just weird. There's a lot of misplaced anger in Sai's life and I don't understand it at all, but I feel With like Aaron it's just everything- basic bullshit and assholeness. Asshole she's just mean. Okay? She's just an she's asshole. Just, she's yeah. just an asshole and she's a dick. She's just, With Sai, I think there's a lot of anger and pain that she hasn't worked through. And she should and, work I was, on, and she shouldn't work on it on the on the show. Please don't. I don't want to see it. Just go yeah. off the show, work on it, come back a nicer person, please. <laughs> exactly. And I think that um I think that I want to just preface to say that like I don't think that Aaron should be off the show. I think Aaron should stay on the show. Aaron is a Aaron oh, yeah. is a good low key, like she's like a gnat, you know, it's like Teddy. Like she's a gnat. Yes. She's annoying, yeah. right? But yeah. And she de- – I would – I think the way she would behave with Ubo was very dangerous because mm-hmm. it, that kind of language used against a black woman is very dangerous. But yeah. I think that for the most part, Erin mostly makes herself look like an asshole, right? Yeah. With she's Cy, an idiot. And she's it's a- okay for us to have an idiot 
who can be a teachable moment for the rest of the society. Sure, sure. <laughs> but with Sai, Sai is yeah. – and also the other thing with Aaron is Aaron is at least willing to engage in conversation about it. Sai yeah. does not engage in conversation about it. Sai That's is not true. willing to have any conversations avoids, about it. She just wants everything. to – she avoids everything. She says she doesn't care and then she screams at you. And then when you respond back, she says, I don't care. She's a very angry person. And I saw a tweet today that said, like, I love a housewives villain as long as there's a reason for their villainy. Like there's a yeah. reason why Kenya Moore is a, is considered a villain because there's a reason for her villainy. There's a mm -hmm. reason why like Candace or Giselle are considered villains. There's a reason for their villainy. There's yeah. not a reason for size villainy. She's just yeah. mad. And, it, yeah. and, and she's not willing to explore why she's mad because right. by the time you get to that, she says, I don't care. And she moves on. And right. it's like, well, I, then I don't want to be around you screaming if you don't care. Yeah. Then yeah. let then let's both not care and let's be yeah. done. Right. So Jessel and Bubbeth arrive and then they get into the mileage run. Now did you you saw that our buddy Je our bu buddy Bubbeth, he did buddy. DM me and tell me I'm that like, he was going to I'm be about doing to this. send him a raki. That's how much I love him. <laughs> I'm going to buy a Rocky and turn it to him. That's how much when I love Rocky it. When is Rocky season? When is Rocky season? It's already season? done. It was last, oh, man. The last one. But, you know, gotta, they're still, it's still available on the shelf. I'm not going to want to send him. <laughs> yeah. He tells us this thing. Where, and he's so – what I love about him is they're asking him these questions. And, like, the way that he responds, he's like, yeah, I got a ticket. I bought three. It was for $900, and I bought three. And, like, just the way he's talking, I'm like, you're – like, I know so many men like you. Because like I know I'm married to one like you. <laughs> <laughs> I will say my husband is not great with like this kind of stuff, but he no, if you were to but the kind of like openness and just blurting out whatever it is. Yeah, yeah just so like what? just so like what? very matter of fact. Yeah, yeah matter, just of matter of fact. Matter of fact, nerdiness. Matter of fact, open nerdiness, and they're proud of it, is just awesome. That's who yeah. my husband is. So he says that there was actually a glitch and he posted about it today. There was a, cl yes. a glitch before COVID oh where around COVID where Cathay Pacific posted these tickets that were like yeah. super whatever, like these first class tickets, whatever. Yeah. And it was a, a, a glitch and the points people, people who follow the points guy, they all got an alert and a whole bunch of people bought them. And so he bought yeah. three tickets yeah. and then he had to cancel them because of COVID and yeah. he's able to use those nine hundred dollar tickets to buy fifteen hundred dollar seats, right? Right. And 15, I calculated them fifteen thousand oh, dollars. Fifteen thousand, yeah, fifteen thousand dollar seats. Mm -hmm. I I googled it, and I think the mileage if you go from New York to Vietnam, mm -hmm. you get end up getting something like sixty thousand miles, which is a lot. And he wow. makes a great point. He goes, I'm racking up these point so that my family and I can go on vacation. It's like, I just, it's so, it's, it's a win-win-win. So win. It's such it's a win-win-win. Win. And also, <laughs> just, if the, if all of the guys and the wives had just shut up, can you imagine the story? Be, he could, he would have been so proud of actually telling this story. The thing that he did on Instagram right now, the reel that he did, imagine if he had actually explained it to the men there. It would have made for interesting conversation, but you guys did not want to listen. He was trying, he would no, have told I you think, how this I do happened. Think that I guarantee that he did try to explain it to them, and I think that the men actually got it. I think that they did. I think that Sai yeah. and Aaron were just digging their heels because they want to paint uh Bavith out to be some sort of like cheater cheater pumpkin eater and like let's talk about it because mm -hmm. Sai keeps okay so Sai and Jessel like the, the men like go off somewhere four Cy times and Jess that they panned to Sai four times they panned to Sai and she was like ah, what is happening in Vietnam Bavith and I'm like shut the fuck up so Sai and Jessel start talking and Sai says that Jessel doesn't make any sense when Sai herself doesn't make any sense. And she says, mm -hmm. I never want to talk about my mom. How I never, I, it's so hard for me to open up about my mom and I never want to talk about it. Bitch, you talked about it on fucking camera at, in Anguilla. Like what do you, how, how is Jessel to know that you, three times, she brought it up three times? Three times. Yeah. With, in Ang Anguilla, then she brought it up with her daughter and then she brought it up with her aunt. I mean, Jessel, yeah. granted, Jessel doesn't know the aunt and daughter thing, but it's not like Sai doesn't want to talk about it. And I have something to yeah. say there, too, because Sai yeah. 
so there's somebody at my workplace whose father mm-hmm. died. Uh-huh. And he just told everybody, at, you know, a bunch of us, a small group of us knew. And he told us not to share it with anybody and that he didn't want condolences and that he didn't want anyone to talk about it, not bring about, bring it up. I don't want anybody sure. sending me flowers. I don't want to deal with it. Fine. But then he brings it up every time he's talking uh, to everybody. He's like, I know I went through something personal and you guys were there for me. Half of the company doesn't know what personal thing you went through. And now you are you are hinting that some of you know and some of you don't. I'm like, okay, do you mm. want to talk about it? Because he brings it up in so many scenarios. They're like, okay, you want to bring it up only on your terms. And the only reason people want, and then people who sent him condolences before he made the declaration, they they got chewed out. And I'm like, no, we are just, this is something normal that people do. And people are just trying to relate to you. People are trying to connect with you. You don't want to connect. And everybody felt so weird afterwards because we were like, Oh, okay and then some uh, some were talking to each other and like maybe he just people just grieve differently maybe he's just grieving in a different way but this is something that we had to talk and we had to come up with ways to make ourselves you know make our make sense of it but in the meantime he yeah. is going out and about talking to many different people about it and it's they come and weird. ask like, us and we are supposed to say that, and we are supposed to say oh I didn't know that it's so weird. That's yeah. how. That's what reminded me of Sai. It's like Sai wants to talk about it on her terms, which is fine, but you cannot then bring. Then you you brought it up with Jessel, and you are shooting her down when she's trying to relate, which just makes Jessel feel like shit because she doesn't know what she did wrong. Yeah, and then and the side, um, Uba and Aaron are talking and. Aaron says something like, oh, she compared her mom to her drunk uncle. Everybody's got a drunk uncle or a drunk cousin. I'm like, fuck you, Aaron. The guy died of alcoholism. Like, I understand that there's no comparison between an uncle and a mother passing, but that was, mm-hmm. again, not the point of the story. Jessel is saying one thing to Sai. Sai is hearing something else and repeating it to Aaron. Aaron is hearing something else and repeating it to somebody else. Again, they're all hearing different things and repeating something completely stupid because they are not actually listening to each other. Like Jessel is genuinely trying to connect with these people. And like you said, she's making a mistake because these are not people who care about you. And these are not your Mm -hmm. friends, babe. Um, Mm -hmm. And also Aaron, like she says something like, oh, this was so messed up. She did the same thing with my grandmother's funeral. What are you talking about? At the, when when this happened, when the memorial happened before Bryn's giving, it was Mm -hmm. said that it was Aaron's grandmother's memorial. And so Jessel mm-hmm. said, I hope everything went really well. I hope today went really well, right? Which is what mm-hmm. you say about a memorial. But apparently Aaron says in the confessional, it wasn't her memorial, it was her funeral, right? So mm-hmm. and even in Aaron says in the confessional, we decided to do the funeral and the memorial together, right? Mm-hmm. Jessel does not know that. So when Jessel says, yeah. I hope everything went well, that doesn't – that's not a weird thing to say. You guys just don't fucking like her. And then yeah. they – Sai and Jessel try to talk and Sai just becomes completely unhinged. She calls Jessel a fucking bitch and then she's screaming and screaming. She walks away and then she goes to Jessel's husband and starts talking to him. Like, that's really weird. And and David sets her up. Like, they were having a whole other conversation. The minute Sai comes in, he's like, "Uh uh-oh. Like, he knew uh, that Sai walked over because something happened with Jessel. And then he brings up, hey, what would you say if I had to go on a miles, if I said I have to go to Vietnam on for a miles run? And she immediately, it's like so pre-planned. She's like, I would be like, who are you fucking? And yeah, it was like so supposed to be funny. Also, That's something wrong also, with David and about- you then, not Pravid. Pravid, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. It, it is wrong between David and her because we, if we are to believe the rumors online about how they met, then 
Mm-hmm. If David was married to somebody else and he decided to step out on his previous marriage and be with Sai, then I can understand why Sai might be feeling a little bit self-conscious and insecure about why how to keep on hold on to her marriage. That's one thing. But the other thing mm-hmm. is Sai has multiple times, multiple times insinuated that the only reason people would visit Asia or visit Vietnam is for yes. the sex industry is deeply, deeply offensive to Vietnamese people and to Asian people. Right. It is so poor. Like you said in the beginning of this episode, he just wants a bond me. And like yes. the fact that they can't understand, they cannot understand where a man would do something not driven by sex is obviously evident because of their marriages, because both of their husbands are men who are yeah. driven only, b- their relationship with their wives is only for sex. And that is the only mm-hmm. thing they imagine that men need. And that is all men do. And like, also, can we talk about the mm-hmm. fact that like, wasn't, um, what's his name? Abe gone to like a gr- he's like a grateful yeah. deadhead. He's like a deadhead. Yeah. So when he goes on all yeah. these like, all these like concerts what is he who's sucking his dick then Aaron he needs it every day yeah he needs it every day Mm. who's doing it then who's doing that it just all of it was so gross and they don't understand it and Sai keeps claiming that Jessel's a liar I love that the editors are editors are like no I didn't lie like she didn't lie you just again are not listening to her Mm -hmm. then the husbands come back and they all talk about the reasons for why the husbands married their partners and like, I don't understand what the issue was with what Bubbitt said. Yeah. He pretty Bubbitt much said, sort of said was a combination of what Abe and what's his name, David said. Yes. And he was like, he just yeah. lets me be me. He likes me to, do, she lets me do whatever, you know, if you have a partner that allows you to do whatever you want and is supportive, that's all you need. Yeah, he said. He said, "I like adventure. I like adventure." And mm-hmm. Jessel's down for that. That's kind of what right. Abe said too. Abe was like, "Oh, I liked. I don't want to have a boring life." And Aaron is cool with yeah. that. Like Aaron wants that yeah. too. And he okay. mentioned sex again. And then, of course, <laughs> yeah, again. This is where Uba tells Aaron. Uh, sorry, tells Sai about her secret boo. And the only reason she does is because David is uh, annoying her and really go- drilling into her about like why she's single, why she's single, why she's single. Again, yeah. I think that is set up. I think Sai yeah. heard through the grapevine that Uba might have someone, right. and as a result, she set David up to do all that shit. Like, I don't believe any right. of that to be like, oh, David was just like yeah. genuinely curious. Where, where like, did David no. come? David was like, Sai set set him up as a very private person, and then here is David going into Pavit and Jessel's relationship, going into uh, Uba's relationship, and asking her. Why is she? She's so beautiful. She's a supermodel. So what if she's a supermodel? Why are you talking about her appearance? And why isn't she with somebody? And Uba, at eventually, she's like, let's just pray. Uba uses humor to sort of deflect yeah. from that questioning. It is so gross for a man to be like going into a woman that he may not know very well. And asking her why she's not married. Why didn't you ask her why? What happens when when she gets married? Are you going to ask her when she's going to get pregnant too? You idiot. It's really gross. Also, I want to say that the internet said that people had, that had been following Sai for a while. Sai herself wrote in a blog post that when she had first had her daughter, her eldest daughter, mm-hmm. she and David were not married, I guess, at that time. And he lived mm-hmm. in Canada. And so they were long distance. And I'm like – Oh, I wonder if you grilled every single per, every if women grilled you yeah. about like, oh, if you have a baby daddy, why does he live in a different country? Right, right. Like that's right. that like something that they would have really come down on Jessel on. So right. the stupid meeting ends, the hangout ends. Jenna and Bryn visit Jessel, and I just love this entire thing because when I number one is when. Bavith makes that comment about Psy being bipolar. I love how all three women were like, "Mm -mm, nope, you better take that back, buddy. And he was like, okay, sorry. (laughs) Jessel was like, "Mm -mm, no, 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 no. No. I think he was like literally, I felt like in that moment, I felt like he was literally translating something in Hindi 
into English. You know how you say something like he, she's wo pagal hai, and then he just yeah. translated it into yeah, something. Yeah, it's possible, else. right? Yeah, yeah, it's possible. But he was he recognized. Jessel looked at him. The PR in her came up. <laughs> she was like, she was uh-uh. like Mm-mm, "Take it back, <laughs> take it back now." You yeah. crossed the line there, buddy. <laughs> But, you know, Bryn says, like, oh, Aaron said it was so weird what he said about, like, how Jessel just lets me do whatever I want and he wasn't even wearing a wedding ring. Does your husband wear a wedding ring? Nope. Doesn't wear any signs that tell anybody that he's married. Has never... Has never won a wedding ring. He has multiple wedding rings that my mother, my father, my uncle have bought. I'm going to melt it, melt it all someday and make myself something. But he doesn't wear a wedding ring because wedding rings have no significance in a Hindu marriage. I don't know if they yes. do in a Muslim marriage. It's a very Christian thing, I think. It's a yeah. Christian it's a, it's not it's a cultural thing. It's not at all anything related to religion at all. Right. So, I, yeah. I mean, I've and, seen in Christian marriages, there's an actual ring ceremony and a ring bearer sure. and all that. In in Hindu weddings, no. There is no. what we call mo- something for the woman to Mangal wear. Mangal Sutra, yeah. Mangal Sutra. And the men, if they are Brahmins, they do have, we wear threads much like uh, Arthuras Jews wear. And there is, yeah. a, you increase the number of threads. So there's, there's some significance if you looked at the Brahmin threads, but if you're not a Brahmin, you don't even have that. So yeah, we we go on full faith and honesty, and yeah. uh, you know, we we believe each other, and we know what's happening. That's all. We're honest with each other. <laughs> yeah, and also, can I just we say, trust. I just love, I just love that he was like, she was like. He goes, I lost, lost. It two weeks after I got married and I never got another one. <laughs> and he's so proud. He's like, see? He's so proud. No. Yeah. I lost he's it. Like, see? He lost it in a public bathroom. <laughs> he lost it in a public bathroom and it was co- it cost $60,000. That's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was a big one. It was a big one. John's going to be He had to call pissed. seven lawyers. He had to get seven lawyers to figure that out. <laughs> I was like, where's this going? Public bathroom. <laughs> Heather Gay had to dig into a tampon box to look for it for fun. Heather, ha- no. Heather Gay has this ring. She probably picked it up. <laughs> so I, I loved it because my husband lost his wedding ring and mm-hmm. then I got him a second one. And you know what he yeah. does? He never wears it because he's like, I don't want to lose it again. <laughs> so- right. <laughs> And it's so funny because like sometimes we'll be going somewhere and I look at his hand. I'm like, oh, my God, you're wearing your wedding ring. Like, why? And I actually yeah. find it so weird now when he does wear it. I'm like, what are you up to? What's going on? This is suspicious. Like, why are who's you doing hit- this? Who's hitting on you that you have to wear a wedding ring to show her that you're married? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> what's good? What's <laughs> this is suspicious. But like this is the case for my friends. Like, like actually a lot of my friends, their husbands don't wear wedding rings because their husbands lost it or almost lost it once or twice. And then the wives were like, you better not yeah. lose that again. So the husband said, okay, I'll never wear it. That's it. But like yeah. Jessel gets emotional, right? Because she feels like she stood up for herself. She was polite. She did not call Sai any names. Sai called her a bitch. She said she's mm-hmm. fucking crazy. She's a liar, all this stuff. She Jessel never said her a anything. diva, which is a compliment. <laughs> Which is a deep, yeah, exactly, exactly, and so that. But Jessel gets emotional, and I got emotional watching this, right? Because yeah. I have such, like, you and I know this so well. When you are a South Asian woman and a person who is not South Asian, typically Western, and this is not limited to just mm-hmm. white people. Obviously, Sai is a woman of color, yeah. and oh, no. apparently, I found no. out that Erin is also a woman of color. She's Middle Eastern. Um, still white passing, but anyway, Western Mm. people, often women, Mm. when they find out that Mm. you as a South Asian woman are married, what's the first thing they ask you? What is, what do you mean? I don't know. What's the first thing they ask you? I don't know. The first thing they ask me is, did you have an arranged marriage? Oh, yes. Every time. The first thing they ask me is, did you, every time. Did you have an arranged marriage? No. I'm like, sometimes no. It, Sometimes they ask me if there was an elephant in my marriage. <laughs> okay, well, you're, you're if my, if my little husband bit wrote different. an elephant to the wedding. <laughs> so it depends if they have, it depends on which Bollywood movie they watch. <laughs> were they watching Netflix and the Indian matchmaker or were they watching a Bollywood movie before they talked to me? Whether they had, you know, whether they went to that one Indian restaurant one time. 
Yeah. And is that what, yeah, how many people were at your wedding? That's the other question they asked. <laughs> Everybody. But it's so frustrating because the question, did you have an arranged marriage, comes, brings mm -hmm. with it a lot of other connotation, right? Like I had this experience sure. also when Jennifer Aiden, love or hate her, when Jennifer Aiden mm -hmm. came on Real Housewives of New Jersey and talked about mm -hmm. her marriage, right? Like she was set mm -hmm. up through someone with Bill. She didn't have, they didn't have sex with each other until they got married, all this stuff. A lot mm -hmm. of people had really strong anti fem like very strong, like anti patriarchal like anti-cultural feelings about it like oh i wonder the husband patriarchy this and that all this shit right like she didn't have a say and did she have a say and she was she was you know given off with a goat and a man like it's all that kind of shit that comes up with what that comes up with the thought of an arranged marriage and what's bothering mm -hmm. me here is that when they talk dig holes into Jessel's marriage, what they're doing is they're trying to delegitimize, right, her marriage. They're basically questioning mm -hmm. whether or not her marriage is a real marriage. What's up with her marriage? Mm -hmm. What do you mean that you mm -hmm. never have sex? Are you guys right? right. What's the deal? Like, yes. because their yes. standard of what marriage looks like com looks completely different than South Asian marriages. And it doesn't even matter if Jessel had the exact same marriage as they did. They would still look at it differently because Jessel is a South Asian woman, period. Yeah. Like, that's how I feel about it. Meanwhile, they have so many uh, opinions about arranged marriage. But meanwhile, 90 Day Fiancé is one of the biggest hit in this country. <laughs> you know how many people, how many different shows have sprung from that? And I, I, you know, there are people, there are people in my life that watch it and they always ask, why didn't you watch that? You watch The Housewives, why didn't you? Because I don't find it entertaining. This is what happens in all of India. It's like you have a 90 Day Fiancé, you get to know them and you got married. And guess what? <laughs> Our matchmakers do a better job of making matchmaking than you guys do. For Aaron, to, from coming from a Jewish culture, to not know arranged marriages or something along those lines is also, you know, that happens in the Jewish community as well. Well, I That's will say Aaron doesn't... Wrong. Aaron doesn't dating, well, dating shit. You know, dating apps are pretty much the same thing without a person connecting well, you. Well, I will say this, that Aaron didn't insinuate anything about arranged marriages. My point right. is that there is always a lens with which Western feminism looks at mm -hmm. South Asian marriages and especially Asian marriages. This, this idea that Asian women are subdued and they're obedient mm -hmm. and they don't have a say and the man mm -hmm. controls everything. Those are all stereotypes. And the way that they are coming at Jessel and trying to poke holes in her as a person her as a wife mm -hmm. like those are yeah. things that are deeply triggering for me to watch because it comes it brings with it a lot of microaggression mm -hmm. and a lot of misconceptions about her culture and I feel bad for Jessel because I think Jessel just wants to be well liked. like she said it she's like I'm in PR like I don't want mm -hmm. like I don't know what you want me to say like I'm in PR yeah. and this is my job but like yeah. I'm gonna tell you a story and I'm going to try to explain it to you because that's how my brain works. Like, and yeah. I don't understand because I don't understand what their problem is, but I felt so seen, like I felt so sad for her because I know that feeling, right? I know that feeling of mm -hmm. feeling like these Western women don't understand my culture. Yeah. And here I am again in another situation where I am misunderstood because I'm again sitting in a culture that I thought I belonged to, but that doesn't actually accept me. Mm -hmm. The other way people approach that is they don't ask you the direct question, did you have an arranged marriage? They ask you, did you know your husband before? Yeah. Uh -huh. What do you mean? What did yeah. that mean? Did you so meet like, your husband uh, at the altar? No, that yeah. is Married at First Sight, a yes. show on TLC, another <laughs> big hit. Yes. Yeah. That. Uh, what do you mean before? Before what? <laughs> I don't understand the question. Yeah. yeah. And it's all, it all there is are so many with different judgment. ways that they ask you that question. You're right. Yeah. And there's, and it's all filled with different types of judgment, right? That's what they're mm -hmm. trying to do. Oh, you don't have sex with your husband. Why? Yeah. Like that they're, oh, your husband is going away probably to get sex from somebody else. Oh, your yeah. husband isn't wearing a wedding ring. Must be a problem. Yeah. And so yeah. what's her name? Erin says in the confessional, I have a lot of theories about them. Yeah. Why? Why do why? you have theories about a person why that you've you known for like about them six months? At all. Yeah, yeah, why are you even thinking about them? Think about like like Pavit says, worry about your marriages. Why are you worried about ours? Yeah, it's none of like one of my listeners said it 
our listeners said it. They said, number one, it's none of their fucking business. Number two, it's none of their fucking business. And mm-hmm. number three, it's none of their fucking business. Like right. there are other – why are you so concerned? Like even Aaron and Cy being like, guys, you need to get to the bottom of it. Did they have sex or did they not? Why? 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 Yeah. And then when Pavit says, yeah, she's and, – and then when Jessel said – Hold on, I need to make this clear. He's my best friend, you guys. Yes. And pa- and uh, and Pavit says, "Yes, that's the bottom line. We are best friends." And then I was so glad that Jenna spoke up and said, "You don't have to defend this. I don't yes. know why they are poking into your relationship. Yes. You don't have to be defensive." Yes. And, and I then I- she keeps correcting correcting Jessel when say Jessel feel says, "I feel defensive. I feel like I need to always be, uh, you know, justifying myself. And she's like, no, you shouldn't feel that. And you don't have to feel that way, but it has to come from within you. You don't have to wait for Jenna Jenna to tell you that. You need to feel for yourself that you don't have to justify it and you don't have to defend. And I think Jessel is just so innocent and she's so hurt that she is truly naive and hurt. That's what's happening. And she's like, she went into it with an open heart. And now she's so hurt that she feels defensive and she has to course correct and stop being defensive. Well, I think she's going to come with a laundry list of things to come at them about. And I'm very excited for it. I cannot wait for the reunion. I cannot wait. I can't wait. Also, um, Bryn brings up a great point, which I think is like, this is so toxic, is Bryn is like, when you stand up to sigh and you scream at her, then she's like, let's go out for a drink. Like, yeah, that's not a person I want to be friends with. Yeah. No. Again, these are conditions with which, uh, like, these people feel that then you're a legitimate person, right? Like, right. You, have to, you have to prove yourself to be a legitimate person by filling up these conditions that are absolutely nonsensical and not the standard. Right. Like, it just right. is strange, and I really hate it. I think Bryn is also falling into the trap of um, saying that – assuming that Jessel didn't stand up for herself. Jessel is saying yeah. to her, I did stand up for myself. And she's like, no, I don't think you did. You don't You don't stand up for yourself. And like, Bryn, you yeah, weren't there. another great point. Another great point, yes. And it's again, it's assuming. Now Bryn is taking over the mantle of, I'm going to protect you, Jessel. You yeah. don't have to protect her. You just have to call out shit when you see shit from your other friends. You exactly. don't have to protect her. You just empower her the way Je- the way Jenna did it was perfect. Yeah. Hey, listen. Yeah. Next time you come here, we have to go to Beatnik and get that vegan sandwich that Uba made. Ooh, yes. Absolutely. I was I was so the chutney looks so good. The sauces so look good. so good. I want to buy Uba hot. I don't know where I get. I need to figure it out and buy it. Mm-hmm. My birthday is in July, and you know it. Yeah, I'm just I putting it out this there. year. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's on the list. I know. I know. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> It's not fine. You forget my birthday. You don't invite me to a podcast hangout. That's fine. It's fine. I won't uh, be All right. You blame well, it on Harold. Th- it's fine. <laughs> any other thoughts about New York before we wrap up? No, I can't wait for next week when um, Psy goes off on Bryn. And I want to see how Bryn stands up for herself because Bryn kept telling Jessel yeah. that she has to stand up for herself. So I want to see how Bryn does it because, you know, it'll be interesting. Yeah. And the other Indeed. thing is I'm I'm ready for the reunion, but I'm also worried for the reunion because I fear that Andy is going to give Aaron and Cy a pass and not really hold their feet to the fire because I don't think he's seen the reaction that audiences had for the past three episodes that happened and that were aired after the reunion. Mm-hmm. So I don't think he quite gets it. And he's going to be like, I, I wonder if Sai is going to talk about her mother at the reunion because she doesn't want to share, right? So I want I want to know if she will be vulnerable then. Yeah, we'll that's see. a great point. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll be yeah. back later this week to talk about um, – Raheel's gone. He's on vacation. But um, I'm going to be back with Van from the Best Week Ever podcast. She's going to join me. Later on this week to talk about pop culture. And then I don't know who I'm going to have to talk about Salt Lake City. It might just be me by myself. Oh, and then you Potomac want- comes back. 
when is Potomac and back? Is comes November 5th, but before that is Beverly Hills, which I'm not okay. looking Okay, we've got Beverly a couple Hills. weeks. Are you looking for the Beverly Hills? Beverly Hills what? comes back in a week and a half. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm not look forward to that, I guess. <laughs> I am more interested, interested in Miami because and oh, Married I'm, to Medicine is coming back too. Married to Medicine is coming back. Miami trailer looked hilarious. Yes. And oh my god, it looked beautiful. It, it looked so good. Cinematic. Yeah. Oh my god, it w- was absolutely cinematic. I keep so forgetting about yeah, Kiki, and then Kiki out. reminds me of Kiki. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, we'll talk to you later then. <laughs>